What's up guys, it's Ed from Techsaurus and welcome to episode 2 of What Tech We Use, which is basically a series I started on the channel to help smaller tech channels succeed in this very oversaturated platform. So in this video we're going to be focusing on what camera they use to shoot their YouTube videos and also why they picked that camera. And as always guys, if you enjoy what you see, consider checking their channels out, I'll drop a link to them down below and maybe even consider subscribing, I know it will mean the world to them. But anyways, I'm done talking, I'm gonna pass it over to Ash Taylor, the legend himself. Take it away, man. Hey guys, Ash here. So the camera I'm using these days is the a 7 s II from Sony. It's been a gradual progression from where I originally started. And the main reason I decided to go with the camera is because it suits my style of shooting and the work I tend to do, both for YouTube and externally. So that's things like the internal stabilization. It's fantastic and works better than many of the lens implementations I've used. And as an added benefit, it gives me the ability to use IS with lenses that don't have it. Then you have all that obvious stuff like the low light capability, which is nothing short of awesome. But also living in a really small space, having a full frame sensor can also help as I can get a wider field of view. When it comes to work outside of YouTube, it really varies on the job, but I've had the pleasure of using a wide range of cameras ranging from the Super 16 Digital Bolex to Red's Epic W. But I have to say the camera that's impressed me the most is the Ursa Mini from Blackmagic. Like all this stuff that had a very rocky start, but the potential with this camera is truly, truly insane for what you pay. I love the image, it's beautiful and has an organic texture to it. The flexibility of recording straight to ProRes is a huge benefit and the menu system, oh, what a joy is it to use. Honestly, if I needed a camera for professional work, this would be it. It has everything that a professional needs and does it in a way that just allows you to get on with the things that matter and focus on the content. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you, Edgar, for hitting me up and thanks to all of you for listening. Take it easy and I'll see you soon. What's going on TechSource viewers? My name is Hamza and the camera that I use to film my YouTube videos is the Sony a6300 and this thing is insane. So by far the main feature about this camera is it practically films 6K video downscale to 4K internal recording, which is crazy due to how compact the camera is. The reason that I did pick up the a6300 was in fact that it films in slow motion at 120 FPS, which means I can be creative and film some really cool cinematic shots using this specific mode and the results have been phenomenal. I have taken this thing on various shoots, tested its low light mode and also tested its autofocus which is one of the fastest in the world on any camera. This thing can get pretty powerful as you can pick two focus points while filming so overall it's an insane camera and you can't go wrong but that's about it from me. I hope to see some of you guys over on my channel and yeah that's about it. Alright guys, bye. What's up guys, Sam here and the camera that I've been using for the past two years is my faithful Canon T3i. And whilst this may not have 4K or high frame rate recording, it's been an absolute trooper and workhorse of a camera. So the best part about this camera is the cost. It can be found for as low as around five to $600 with a kit lens. So that makes it a great affordable option if you're just starting out and getting into the YouTube game. The other thing that I absolutely love about this camera is the cinematic images you can capture using it, especially if you're willing to get creative with your lighting. Perhaps the biggest downside of this camera is the low light capabilities, which are definitely not great. But aside from that, this is a really great entry level DSLR camera. Looking ahead, if I could, I would love to have my next camera upgrade be either the Sony a7R Mark II or the Sony a7S Mark II. Given the internal 4K recording, the in-body camera stabilization, the full frame sensor, the crazy low light capabilities, and the list goes on. So fingers crossed that might happen soon. Other than that, a big thank you to Ed for inviting me to be involved in this video, and hopefully I might catch you guys over on my channel soon. I'm Ebo Zvox, and after nearly five years of shooting on my Canon T3i, I was finally able to upgrade to a better camera, the Panasonic G7, which is what you're seeing right now. This is a fantastic budget camera with a beautiful 4K image and a natural film-like grain. I've been able to set up some really nice in-camera settings that don't require me to do much color grading or color correction whatsoever. It looks great even with the kit lens, but I also went ahead and got a nice Rokinon 12mm f2.2 cine lens to go with it as well, and it is Wonderful. The G7 handles low light way better than my T3i ever did, and the Wi Fi connectivity and touchscreen made it super easy to learn and adapt to as well. If I get a chance to upgrade again, I'd have to probably upgrade to the Panasonic GH5. 4K, 60 FPS, 10 bit internal recording, the clips that will come out of that camera are going to be beautiful, and I can't wait to see what people will do with it. Of course, I'd love to upgrade to the red 8K camera that every, all the tech tubers have been upgrading to lately, but that's going to be forever out of my budget. Hey guys, 
my name is Victor and just like Ed, I also run a tech channel known as Everything Technology and where I produce tech videos based on consumer electronics. The camera I use to film all my videos is the Panasonic Lumix G7 with a Rokinon 60mm f2.0. The reason being because it happened to be on sale um, bundled up with the Rode VideoMic Pro at the same time when every tech YouTuber was switching to 4K. I really like this camera because it shoots 4K has a touchscreen articulating display, and the software on it is really easy to use. If I was to upgrade right now, but I don't plan on, I would probably go with the Sony a6300 because it's another budget 4K camera and it has an APS-C sensor. And that's gonna do for my part. Thanks, Ed, for having me on. So that is it for this collab. As always, make sure to check out the talent. I'll drop a link to their channels down below, guys. Consider checking them out. Maybe even subscribe if you like what you see. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the series, and I'll see you in the next video.